Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this series, today's class is on happiness or well-being. Let us know how psychologists define happiness. When we say happiness, which words are coming in your mind? Smile, laughing, joy or many other terms. So, in today's class, let us know how psychologists define happiness. Diener and his associate in 2009 categorized different theories in three categories. They said some scholars focused on need and goal satisfaction theories like humanistic perspective. I think you can easily recall need hierarchical theory in which Abraham Maslow mentioned that first we fulfill our basic needs like physiological needs, safety needs, love belonging needs and then only we have self esteem and self actualization. So, we are growing once we fulfill our basic needs. Other scholars focus more on process and activity theories. For example, they are saying that when we are doing certain activities, then during that process we are happier. For example, during flow, flow is an activity in which we involve fully, gratitude, thanksgiving activities. So, they focused more on processes, on activities. Third group scholars focused more on genetic and personality disposition theories. They are saying that happiness as a trait as well as there are various traits which are positively correlated with happiness and some other are negatively correlated with happiness and they focused on happiness and related factors. So, various scholars, various definitions, various ways of assessing or measuring someone's happiness we have. So, let us know one by one all theories, how they are defining happiness and ways of measuring someone's happiness. In this series, first model is subjective well-being, hedonic perspective or well-being or happiness we can say. As per this perspective, a person's main objective in life is to experience as much pleasure as possible while generally avoiding any painful experiences. It means if we are experiencing pleasure in our life and avoiding pain experiences, then we have happiness level. And for assessing or measuring this type of happiness, we take all together all things and then we ask participants taking all things together, how would you say things are these days? Would you say you are very happy or very unhappy? Scale your response. So, then scale is very unhappy to very happy. So, for example, if someone is saying uh, my score is 2 on this scale, so then we will say his happiness level is low. On the other hand, if person is saying by considering all things of his life, his score is 6 or 7, then we will say this person is very happy. And in this case, we are not taking into account different domains. We are not asking in terms of your family, in terms of your occupation, in terms of your study. But here it is overall view of your life and then as per this overall view of your life, what is level of your happiness. Next scholars expanded this model a little bit more. They said cognitive and affective evaluation of life is happiness and they said experiencing pleasant emotions or positive emotions. When we are saying there are two components, one is cognitive evaluation that is life satisfaction and another one is affective evaluation that is positive emotions and lack of negative emotions is your level of happiness. So, when we say cognitive evaluation, how people evaluate their own lives in terms of cognitive explanations. So, how do they experience or how do they evaluate different sector of their life in terms of satisfaction plus 
positive affect or positive emotion, various positive emotions, feelings and moods that we frequently experience and easily recognize. And total model is high if we have high score on life satisfaction and positive affect and low score on negative affect, then that is our high level of happiness. I think if we connect it with some psychological test, then you have better understanding because uh, you would find there are various psychological tests to measure someone's happiness. Why it is so? Why do not we have only one psychological test and say this is your level of happiness? Because different scholars have different definitions, different scholars had different theories and as per these theories they develop their psychological test. When we say operational definition of a construct and that should be highly correlated and connected or associated with psychological test. So, this series is actually connection between theory and related psychological test. That is why we have number of theories as well as number of psychological test to assess someone's happiness level or maybe in next chapters we will talk about flow, resilience and other constructs. So, meanwhile let us concentrate on happiness. So, if we just count overall view of your life and that is our theoretical explanation of happiness, then our questions in a psychological test should be related and we call it construct validity. So, at the time of test construction, we usually get assurance to have same questions which are connected with operation definition or a theory of this particular construct. If we say theoretical explanation of happiness is overall view of our life, then these questions would be appropriate to test someone's happiness. For example, first question is in general I consider myself not very happy person 1 and a very happy person 7. Compared with most of my peers, I consider myself less happy 1 and 7 on this scale is more happy. Next question is, some people are generally very happy. They enjoy life regardless of what is going on, getting the most out of everything. To what extent does this characterization describe you? Not at all to a great deal, that is 7 1. Fourth question, some people are generally not very happy. Although they are not depressed, they never seem as happy as they might be. To what extent? does this characterization describe you? I think we need to understand several points here. Number one, you can easily count that it is talking about our overall happiness level. Second, in comparison of others, what is our level of happiness? So, most of the time when we uh, evaluate our happiness level, we take into account other surrounded people in our life. Third point, which is very important here is, fourth question is a negative question. If you know about psychology, you must be knowing that in psychological test, we have composition of negative and positive items most of the time. And first we get raw data and then we get score data. And during scoring, we do reverse scoring of negative items most of the time. So, fourth item would be reversed item here. So, in this case by considering your overall well-being as well as your happiness level in comparison to others we are considering here and then total score is your happiness level. If we take into account another model that is life satisfaction plus positive emotion minus negative emotion. In that sense we have to have a questionnaire based on life satisfaction and positive emotions. For example, in number of studies, scholars have used satisfaction with life scale plus positive and negative affect PANUS scale developed by Watson and his associate in 1988. By taking these two psychological tests, then they test level of happiness based on subjective well-being. This second model focus more on happiness plus meaning in life. Aristotle described the deeper and more balanced style for the good life. Eudaimonia literally mean meaning having a good guardian spirit. If we possess of true well-being that is our psychological well-being. Eudaimonic 
well being or psychological well being is developing the best in oneself plus belonging to and serving institutions larger than, than oneself. It includes various factors. A person is truly happy when he was what is worth desiring, living according to virtues and values, fulfilling one's potential. So, I think you can easily connect with previous uh, theory in which we are just saying feeling pleasure, evaluating our life as satisfied one. On the other hand, in this model, we give more importance to meaning, of, uh, meaning in life, give importance to virtues and values and the way where we fulfill our potentiality and program to grow and we observe we are growing in our life. For developing this model, Riff for her associates develop a new model called psychological well-being. When she developed this model, she reviewed the literature and studied all scholars positive factors work in psychology. For example, mental health by Jehoda, individuation by Carl Liu, self-actualization by Maslow, full functioning person by Rogers, maturity or positive personality traits by Alport, executive processes of personality, basic life tendencies, personal developmental by Eric Erikson's, will to meaning by Frankel. So, they considered all those factors which were existing in psychology literature and then they proposed six factor model. First factor is self acceptance, positive evaluation of oneself and one's past life. So, when we accept ourselves our present as well as our past life and good and bad points, all acceptance if we have about our personality, then we have one positive characteristics which is contributing to happiness. Second one is personal growth, a sense of continued growth and development as a person. That is a second factor. Third is purpose in life, the belief that one's personal life is purposeful and meaningful. And fourth one, positive relations with others. The possession of quality relations with others is very important. Even in new reports, in cross-cultural researches, in world happiness reports and all other reports, they are taking into account a construct that is social inclusion versus social exclusion. If you perceive you are not part of your community or your society, then that is called social exclusion. On the other hand, if you perceive you are very much part of your community, very much part of your society, that is called social inclusion. Social inclusion is positively correlated with happiness. Next factor is environmental mastery, the capacity to manage effectively one's life and surroundings in the world. So, if you find everything whatever you want to do in your life, you are capable to do, then you have one component of happiness. Next is autonomy a sense of self-determination. So, if you have full power, in, intrinsic motivation, whatever you want to do in your life able to do, then you have higher level of well-being. I think both the models clear to you. First one, hedonic tradition or hedonic model or can say subjective well-being and another one is eudonomic tradition or model where that is psychological well-being. So, some scholars actually combined these two models and then they proposed flourishing theory or well-being theory and then they said by including these two independent theories, we may have further developed theories in psychology and uh, they consider in the same theory cognitive and affective component or uh, life satisfaction, pleasure attainment and pain avoidance plus self acceptance, autonomy, personal growth, purpose in life, environmental mastery, positive relationship with others, etc. And then they propose their theory. For example, Dinner and his associates in 2009, they proposed new theory called flourishing and well established psychological test now we have. So, in this case, their idea is hedonia and eudonomia, they are sharing their percentage of variance. To some extent, they are connected with each other. If they have connection, then why not by combining these two models, we generate new model. And in this model, he's, they said social psychological functioning, which includes purpose and meaning, supportive relationships, engagement, 
contribution to well being of others, competence, self acceptance, optimism and being respected and they proposed actually these are main factors which are contributing to the flourishing. And in their psychological test all these factors oriented items or questions we have to measure someone's well being. Because a recent study of over 13,000 people suggests that pursuing engagement or meaning are more strongly related to well being than pursuing pleasure. So, that is why if we combine both the views then we can better understanding on flourishing. More than that another theory is on mental health which is proposed by Keyes. In this model by including psychological well being which we have already discussed, emotional well being which we have already discussed or subjective well being we can say and he actually included his own model that is social well being. And by combining all these three he said that is our mental health level. So, I think you can easily understand psychological well being and emotional well being because we have already discussed about them. On the other hand social well being which is new model or uh, key is his original model and he has included here and saying that social acceptance, social integration, social growth social contribution and by having social coherence we may have better understanding of mental health in which we are including positive functioning, positive functioning which is a combination of psychological well being and social well being and positive feelings which is emotional well being. So, his broadly his model is psychological well being plus social well being plus emotional well being. Let us know these three models once again in which we have some items also. So, that we you can easily connect what kind of questions could be asked if we have this particular factor to understand happiness. So, here elements or factors we have and then some sample items. Some of these items are negative items. So, you know if you have high score on negative item it means you have lesser level of self acceptance or lesser level of that particular element. So, let us take one by one all these factors to understand a little bit more their definitions and how it reflects in various items or questions which can be used in a psychological test to assess level of your well being. First factor is self acceptance possess positive attitude towards the self, acknowledge and accept multiple aspects of self, feel positive about past life. So, self acceptance means when you accept all aspects of your life and you perceive yourself positively when you are thinking about your past and you have attitude toward yourself. Questions related to this element or this factor are I like most part of my personality. So, if you say high score it means you have high level of self acceptance. On the other hand when I look at the story of my life I am pleased with how things have turned out so far. Again high score means good thing. In many ways I feel disappointed about my achievements in life that is negative question. So, if you say disappointed in your life it means low self acceptance you have. Next factor is personal growth, have feelings of continued development and potential and are open to new experiences, feel increasingly knowledgeable and effective. So, personal growth means when you feel or you experience every day you are growing. Question related to this factor are for me life has been a continued process of learning changes and growth. In this case we are talking about the process in which we are learning changing and growing. Second question is I think it is important to have new experiences that challenge how I think about myself and the world. So, new experiences included there. Third which is negative question I gave up trying to make big improvements changes in my life a long time ago. So, you gave up in your life and that is why that is not in personal growing side. Next factor is purpose in life, have goals and a sense of direction in life, past life is meaningful, hold beliefs that give purpose to life. 
So, in this case if you find purpose in your life as well as when you perceive your past you observe that your life has been meaningful. Some questions related to it, some people wander aimlessly through a life, but I am not one of them. And that is if you have aimless life means there is no purpose and definitely that the question is negative one. Next is I live life one day at a time and do not really think about the future. Next one I sometimes feel as if I have done all there is to do in life and again that is negative question. So, if you we have high score on first and low score on last two then we have higher level of purpose in life and to some extent you can easily connect how these are contributing to purpose in our life. Next factor is environmental mastery. Feel competent and able to manage a complex environment, choose or create personally suitable community. So, you are able to actually master your environmental conditions. So, then you have higher level of well being. The demand of everyday life often get me down. So, not able to meet your demands, everyday demands, then you have lower level of environmental mastery. In general, I feel I am in charge of the situation in which I live and you, if you have charge of your life, charge of your environmental conditions, then definitely you have high level of environmental mastery. I am good at managing the responsibilities of daily life. So, if you are able to manage your daily life opportunities or daily life responsibilities, then you have higher level of environmental mastery. Next factor is autonomy. They are self-determining independent and regulated internally, resist social pressure to think and act in certain ways, evaluate self by personal standards. Questions related to these factors are, I tend to be influenced by people with strong opinions, that is negative questions. So, if you are changing your lifestyle as per others opinions and not giving much importance to your own autonomy or thinking style, then you have lower level on autonomy. I have confidence in my own opinions even if they are different from the way most other people think. So, this question lead to higher autonomy. Next questions are related to social well-being. I think we should understand it in detail because we are addressing at least social well-being first time. It is not like psychological well-being and emotional well-being which we have to some extent explored earlier also. So, in this case first factor is social acceptance, have positive attitudes toward oneself, acknowledge others and generally accept people despite others sometimes complex and confusing behaviors. So, others acceptance is main here with uh, even though they may have uh, some complex and confusing environment, uh, but still you accept others. Question related to this factor, people who do a favor expect nothing in return that is your treat. People uh, do not care about other people's problem that is negative question. I believe that people are kind that is positive question. So, if you have high score on first and third and low score on the middle one then you have high level of self acceptance. Next factor is social actualization, care about and believe society is evolving positively. Think society has potential to grow positively, think safe society is realizing potential. So, you could easily connect it, it with self actualization. Here about the society, is it growing every day? So, social actualization means when we perceive the society is growing, society is evolving and it is realizing its potentiality. In the questions related to this factor are, the world is becoming a better place for everyone that is positive uh, question. <clears throat> society has stopped making progress as well as society has not improved for people like me. So, both questions are negative if you perceive like that then you have lesser level or, or lower level of self actualization. Next factor is social contribution, social contribution means feel they have something valuable to give to the present and to the society, think their daily activities are valued by their community. 
and you it means you contribute and you feel you know you are able to contribute in your community or in your society. Questions related to this factor are I have something valuable to give to the world. So, you are think you are contributing to your society or you are contributing to your community. Second question is my daily activities do not create anything worthwhile for my community uh, as well as I have nothing important to contribute to society. So, both questions are negative questions. So, if you have low score on last two and high score on the first in which we are saying valuable to give the world that is your perception, then you have high level of social contribution or high score in this factor. Next is social integration, feel part of community, think they belong, feel supported and share commonalities with community. So, in this case questions are I do not feel I belong to anything I would call a community, the definitely that is negative question. I feel close to other people in my community, my community is a source of comfort. So, if you feel your community is a source of comfort as well as you have close relationship with others or close relationship with your community, on the other hand you do not feel you have not belongingness to your community. So, then you have high level of social integration during assessment. Next uh, factor is emotional well being to some extent you know but let us revise previous information here. It is combination of positive effect, negative effect, life satisfaction and happiness. Positive effect experience symptoms that suggest joy and happiness uh, for life. Uh, for example, during the last 30 days how much of the time did you feel cheerful, in good spirit, extremely happy, calm? and peaceful, satisfied and full of life. So, for studying someone's positive effect, we may have questions related to these items and then can assess level of your positive effect. Negative effect, absence of symptoms that suggest that life is undesirable and unpleasant. Question related to this factor, during the last uh, 30 days, how much of the time did you feel so sad that nothing could cheer you up? Uh, nervous, restless, hope, hopeless that everything was an effort worthless. So, you can easily manage here or can see all items are negative items. So, if you perceive like that your life then you have lower level of emotional well being. Next factor is life satisfaction, a sense of contentment, peace and satisfaction from small discrepancies between wants and needs with accomplishments and attainments. So, it means we perceive our life satisfied, peaceful, contentment and we do not have much discrepancies between our wants and needs. So, questions for this factor, during past 30 days how much of the time did you feel satisfied or full of life? and uh, some questions are like that. Overall these days, how satisfied are you with your life? 0 to 10, where 0 is terrible and 10 is delighted. Satisfaction may be measured in uh, life domains, for example, work, home, home, neighborhood, health, intimacy, finance, parenting, etc. or in some cases we just talk about global level of globally or by considering overall view of your life, how your life is satisfied, how much it is satisfied. That could be one question in which we are interested to know global level of your life satisfaction. On the other hand, in some cases we may take more interest in particular areas. For example, your life satisfaction in terms of work, in terms of home, in terms of relationship, in terms of health in terms of intimacy, in terms of parenting or many other domains of our life. Last factor is happiness, having a general feeling and experience of pleasure, contentment and joy. And for this question, uh, overall these days how happy are you and your life? How frequently have you felt joy, pleasure, happiness in the past week or sometime we say month or year as per our requirement? So, uh, I think 
now all three models are very clear to you because in this case we have taken the definitions once again of all those factors which are existing in these three main domains that is uh, psychological well being, that is social well being and that is emotional well being. And we have taken some uh, sample items also. So, how your level of uh, happiness as per these factors would be evaluated as per these you know questions or questions which we usually use in psychological test. And this uh, information has been taken from positive psychology book reference has been given in this slide. Now, next point here is after having all those things, how would we differentiate among people in which category they are? You should know that your score alone has not any information. For example, I am saying that happiness level is say 20, your well being level is say 25 or maybe mental health level is say 55 and your next question would be what does it mean? Am I happy or less happy or have high, higher level of happiness or what, what is it? So, what is interpretation of these scores? So, for knowing these further messages, we divide total population on the basis of you know norms which we developed from the same population as well as sometime we have some other notions. For example, in this case we are able to say that when person is languishing or sluggish or having very low level of mental health or when he has moderate level or in which situation he would be flourishing or having very high level of mental health. So, in this case keys identified as per your response rates. I think before saying say one emotional well being plus six positive functioning, let us know a little bit more about this mental health continuum psychological test. I think that is clear to you. In this case, we have uh, uh, psychological well being and it is six facets or six factors, social well being five factors and emotional well being three factors. So, if we add 6 plus 5 plus 3, then total number of items would be 14. Out of 14, say where 3 items are related to emotional well being and 11 items are related to positive functioning combination of psychological well being and social well being. So, in this case, he is saying that if you have say 1 emotional well being and 6 out of 11 here, positive functioning almost every day or every day it means highest score on at least one item out of three on emotional well being and six out of eleven on positive functioning which is combination of psychological well being and uh, social well being. So, in that case you are flourishing in your life. On the other hand it is just opposite of it one emotional well being out of three and six positive functioning out of eleven you are saying never or once or twice, then you are languishing or uh, sluggish or having very low level of mental health. On the other hand, if you have say mixture of both, then you are at moderate level. So, uh, this is the way to define our mental health continuum in which we are saying that at first level we have uh, uh, mental disorders and then we have uh, we are languishing and uh, then next is moderate level of mental health and then uh, flourishing and its psychological resources these are. We had one recent research paper by following this particular model, we observed that however, this data was from Delhi uh, private schools. So, we cannot generalize it to Indian adolescents population, but still in this research we get very promoting results and we found that 46.4 percent Indian adolescents were flourishing and 51.2 percent were moderately mentally healthy and only 2.4 percent were languishing. So, that is quite good results and uh, were comparable with the uh, US data. However, these results cannot be generalized to Indian adolescents because this data was from privately studying Delhi students only. After having two main factors here mental illness and uh, mental health, Keyes has proposed one model and as per this model, 
he said that we can divide total population in four categories. One on the uh, one side this is mental illness and another factor here is mental health. So, by combining these two factors we may have four categories. Number one category languishing and mental illness. So, you do not have high level of mental health as well as you have some mental illnesses. Another group of uh, population or people may be flourishing and mental illness. You have certain mental illness, but still you have very high score on mental health or can say mental illness, but flourishing in your life. Third category is languishing in which we can say you are not having any mental illness, but still not flourishing in your life and have very low score on mental health. Fourth group is flourishing in which you do not have any problem in your life as well as you are flourishing in your life. Problem is you do not have any mental illness. So, that way actually population can be divided in different categories on the basis of mental illness and mental health. And here another model I think uh, just to revision of our previous model in which we can divide here is complete mental illness, incomplete mental illness, incomplete mental health and complete mental health. Apart from previous theories let us know different model which is significantly different from previous one and it is more based on motivation and needs, desires. So, is proposed by Rians and Desi in 2001 called self-determination theory of well-being. They are saying that there are certain needs. These needs should be fulfilled to have personal well-being and social development. These needs are the need for competence. It seek to control the outcome and experience mastery. People need to gain mastery of task and learn different skills. Second need is need for belongingness, involves developing secure and satisfying connections with others in one's social setting. People need to experience a sense of belonging and attachment to other people. And third need is need for autonomy. People need to feel in control of their own behavior and goals. So, if you are able to fulfill all these three needs that is competence. So, it means you are able to learn different uh, tasks and you have uh, good experiences or mastery and belongingness to others you have <coughs> attachment in your life you have uh, you know good uh, positive relations you have. On the other hand autonomy you whatever you want to do in your life you are able to. So, if you are able to fulfill all those needs then only you would be growing, you would be satisfied in your life and personal well-being and social development in your life you will be having. They also connected it with intrinsically motivated. They said when people are in this optimal condition, they are intrinsically motivated able to fulfill their potentialities and to seek out progressively greater challenges. Intrinsic motivation which will be discussed later in detail, it means when you have your own motivation. You are not under the external factors to get motivation. For example, external or extrinsic motivation could be when you are doing certain things for marks, for uh, doing certain things for affiliation, for social approval. On the other hand, we do certain works where we have our own interest. We want to do and that is why, why we are doing. That is called intrinsically motivated people or intrinsic motivation in our life. And uh, here our motivation is to fulfill our own potentialities because we are programmed to grow and that is why we want to grow and that is why we are fulfilling all those needs to get personal well-being and social development. So, I think this theory is clear to you in which competence, autonomy, relatedness these are three needs need to be you know effective in dealing with the environment, need to control the course of their uh, lives, need to have a close affectionate relationship with others. And uh, they suggested that when people experience these three things or fulfillment of needs because this theory is from motivation that is why they have focused more on needs fulfillment. They become uh, self determined and able to do intrinsically motivated to pursue the things that interest them. Let us take another theory 
and this theory focus more on authentic happiness proposed by Seligman in 2003. If you could recall previous uh, lectures in the character strengths chapter, central focus was on the pleasant life, the good life and the meaningful life. And for all these three lives, we had certain character strengths which were highly connected with pleasant life, with the good life and then meaningful life. And it was actually Seligman's first model where he proposed that there are three roots of happiness. First root is the pleasant life. We want to have pleasant life for getting higher level of happiness. Positive emotion, gratification was the main factors of pleasant life. And second one is the good life in which we have engagement, flow and uh, connected with our life. Third one is meaningful life, using your strengths in the service of something greater than yourself. When you serve in the community time wise, maybe money wise and you find certain meanings of your life by serving others. So these are three routes to get happiness. In 2011, he revisited his theory and he proposed that PERMA model and this PERMA is P-E-R-M-A. So, in this model, he is saying that positive emotions is the first factor for well-being or happiness. Experiencing joy and pleasure. Second is engagement or in a flow, being consciously involved in our activities. A third is relationships, having enjoyable and supportive interactions with others. Next was meaning, creating a purposeful narrative about our lives. Fifth one accomplishments, completing our goals and following our core values that is fifth uh, factor in his theory. And uh, let us know a little bit more about uh, these factors. So, positive emotions when we perceive our past, future, present all situations with positive emotions. For example, when we are perceiving our past, we have some positive emotions. When we are thinking about our future, the again we have something positive in our life and in present we are happy and healthy. So, in all sectors we have positive emotions. Second one is relationships. We have discussed relationship again and again with the different uh, theoretical background. So, building strong relationships, th these are very important in family, in friends, in co-workers, neighborhood with the children, in all sectors when we are satisfied with our relationship. Next one is accomplishment. Everyone needs to win something sometimes. So, I did it uh, and I did it well. So, such kind of accomplishment or achievements we want to have in our life. Engagement, when we have certain activities in which we love to do and we are doing and in with full flow and without any external forces, we are happy and healthy by doing those kind of activities. Next one is meaning. There are various ways to get certain meanings, but if we have some meanings, in our life, these meanings are actually helping us to have happy life. Like uh, we may have some religious faith, we may have some uh, you know community work or some work in family, maybe in politics, maybe you know we are doing some excellent work in uh, our uh, daily life or creative goals we have or somewhere we find meaning of our life. So, these are five factors which are defining our well-being. One another model by you know Hooper and So in 2013 and this model is actually mixture of previous models as well as some new ways they have. They are saying that there are some positive aspects of mental functioning and they have identified these positive aspects are competence, emotional stability, engagement, meaning, optimism, positive emotion, positive relationship resilience, self-esteem and vitality. I think you can easily connect some of these factors we have already covered with other theories. However, like resilience, optimism, vitality, these are some factors which are included by them to describe well-being theory. They claimed that this theory has both components that is hedonic as well as eudonomic 
and by taking uh, both criteria or both perspectives, they have proposed positive feeling and positive functioning aspects of well-being. Thank you.